Hello, welcome to Off the Press, the program where we take a look at all the headlines and make sense of it. This morning, to do so with me in the studio is uh, Femi Idou Adegoke, Dr. Femi Idou Adegoke, Public Affairs Analyst, mm -hmm. and uh, Ifi Oji, um, Policy Analyst also. Good morning, Amaka. Good morning. It's good to have you both here this morning. Okay. So we have a couple of papers with us, but we shall begin with the Nation newspaper. It will be displayed. And it says, Laute can ask you to begin strike, protest, overpay. That story already displayed there is on page 42. Now, we didn't buy planes with power cash. That's a, a, a firm's, firm defense integrity. On page 8, APC PDP, PDP clash over Olujimi. Ade loses out on page 41. And then we go to the Payasa and Kogi elections. PDP leaders push for Diri at Grand Rally. Jonathan absent. Group accuses police of plotting to rig. And 35,000 policemen for Kogi. Leon visits Jonathan's mom. All of this you find on page 10 of the Nation newspaper. Let's go to the big story. Senate pushes for use of drones uh, to fight kidnapping. Tracking of telephone, creation of national emergency call uh, center also on the way. That story is on the front page there, but it's continued on page seven. And social media bills six jail for abusers, 10 million naira fine for media houses. That's huge. It's on the front page there, continued on page eight. Now, total mall sales of funding equity in Bonga Field. Front page continued on page eight. And then we have a picture story from the fire that, uh, that occurred two days ago in Balogun. Uh, unfortunately, two die in Lagos market fire as police arrest 12. That story is on page six of the Nation newspaper. Showare, no testimony in camera, page 40. And simply Mr. Governor says Sonwolu on page seven. Where do we begin this morning? If you let me start with you. Okay, um, again, I think it's very important. I always stress the importance of technology, mm. especially in the countries that are developing, mm. as it, it's a, a, the main catalyst to propel us to any kind Change of economic, exactly, any transformation. And I think it's a positive step from the Senate because I know that Nigeria is typically, as a nation, we are technologic phobic. Mm. We don't like technology because of the transparency it brings, and we, I'm not going to and cast aspersions on anybody within government. But I'm, I'm just saying that it obviously is better for things to be off, obfuscated uh -huh. normally. So having it transparent through technology is the only way we can drive transformation and um, economic growth forward. So using uh, drones, drones, yes, using drones is another way of looking at robotics. So under the fourth industrial revolution, mm. I know I'm the big, everyone says I'm the big proponent of the fourth industrial you revolution are iffy. for Africa. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am, because I just yeah. believe that digit, them, them, anything digital, anything technology is the only way we can get out of this mess that we are in. Hmm. I think that you can use, not only for kidnapping, you can use drones for every single thing, but specifically looking at kidnapping and specifically looking at the, at the uh, strategies that they're trying to put forward. I think that those are steps that are not even within the drone, that they're not even um, part of what the um, drone capacity is. Mm. So yes, we can have the, the other things. We've had all those things, and those are still under automation. So having access to our numbers and going through all the masks and the, and the uh, communication masks to, to track our numbers and track for kidnappers is what we would have done maybe 10 no, years ago. ago. Mm. So other things, there are so many options open to us with artificial intelligence that we can actually sort of harness uh, harness from. So, I mean, if, if this is what they are, if, if, if we are getting to the government level and public policy level, and they're talking about this, I don't think how this can be negative for oh, us. Good, good, good. Any thoughts on that or you want to no, go on not, the story? Not um, disagreeing with what she said. Oh. It's perfect. It's the right way to go if we're going to be globally compliant. Oh. But my challenge, personally, is making it a news. Because, I, like, I'm an, I'm, I, like I've always said, even the criminals, they get the news. And when... Oh, you're saying they're exposing yeah, uh, their strategy? Don't. Like she said, there is what they call artificial intelligence. You need to be a step ahead of who you're dealing with. How, could you, how would you recommend that they do it? I'm not saying, that, like she said, before. like she mentioned, they should have done this years, we should have done this years ago. Uh -huh. So when you're doing it, making noise about it, making it the news. No, they are informing. You've, you've been informed. I, 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 well, think, I think. Well, I, 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 I respectfully <laughs> disagree, only mm. because I feel that well. robotics is such a, such a level with robotics now. If you look at even Rwanda, 
yeah. where they're using um, drones to, um, to for, um, for blood banks, yes. to distribute blood in, yes. in remote areas, right? Yeah. The point is that drones, as, as they are, are, are not necessarily in, within the purview of the typical kidnapping. Exactly. If, they, if it was, they wouldn't be kidnapping in the first place. Let's mm. be honest. You know, they don't have the capacity to do these things yet. So, if there are any... If, if there any that's why I disagree. Are you saying they are, they've gone, we've gone a step further than Yes, but at, at the point where you're announcing that drones are available to detect kidnapping, right, you, you, you must be prepared in terms of... They cannot track... That's the whole point of having drones, right? Drones capacity, you cannot track drones, but typically from a um, kidnapper's point of view. At the point where you're doing that, it means that you're not even at like a kidnapper at that level, right? Uh -huh. You don't have any access to uh, that kind of information that that particular drone would have. That's the beauty of that's technology. Call, yes. I understand that's the beauty of technology, but the truth is that these criminals, we've seen what they call them, all these um, jihadists, they have access to all these technologies as well. Uh -huh. so they can begin to operate in another dynamic. Wait, well, before we get to them That's operating, what I'm saying. Let's, just get, let, let's just get started with this and no, see no, how no to problem. tackle the situation They can change here. the dynamic of operation as the kidnappers. Mm. Anyway, we'll find it. There, there will be. So let's say this is just a step forward yeah, uh, it, from it where, we, where we used to be. It okay, is. so moving forward, Asu and Lautek said they will begin their strike and protest over pay. I know we've had these conversations over mm. and over uh, here. Uh, Dr. Femi, what are your thoughts? Well, I wouldn't want it to degenerate to strike mm. because of the students involved. And at the time of the year also. Yeah, I feel mm. the Lautek authority and ASU ah, so. should be able to sit down and solve things amicably. Mm -hmm. I know they said they've been discussing and they've been meeting um, Ed Wall, um, uh, Brick Wall, mm -hmm. but they should, uh, I'm appealing to them for the sake of the students. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, this is one of the reasons why so many people would rather go study somewhere else and not in Nigeria because of the strike action. You know, people who are supposed to graduate in four years or in three years, they end up being in school for God knows how long. So i just yeah. trying to say that I hope they find a middle ground to this and, and they move forward from that. And then, again, we saw the unfortunate incidents that happened uh, two days ago of the fire. Outbreak. We discussed it already yesterday. Mm. Do you have mm. any thoughts on just, that? Yeah, just uh, I, I don't really have that much on th and, and thoughts on the fire. But okay. what I will talk about also is social media bill. Though I know we've talked about it a little as well, mm -hmm. and I don't think Look any of the other papers addresses it. Mm -hmm. So I feel that um, the social media bill that uh, we need to really look again and go back to the drawing board on that. We are trying to censor. Censorship is not what this con what will take this country forward. We have to have frank discussions, even at on the media. Uh, platforms. We have mm -hmm. to have and what this is trying to do is, is trying to basically uh, uh, gag, gag us. Know. Exactly. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for, thank you doctor to gag us. But I also feel that... Do you think exactly so? Yeah, well, go ahead. Well, yes. I just think that we should focus more on protecting our citizens. The bill does not address that as, as much as it should. Mm -hmm. Protect our citizens from data protection and just their data being exposed. Right now, as we speak, I will not mention which companies there are. There are a lot of companies that are in fintech and uh, di um, digital space that are selling our data mm. to big foreign corporations. And that is what we should be looking at, not uh, at uh, curtailing mm. our rights to speech and information for our citizens. That is what I would say about yeah, that. Yeah, I think that's a very big point you've raised Absolutely. there, really. If that's... Absolutely. She mm. just hit it on the head, and she's explained it explicitly. Look, these our National Assembly, they just sit down and we just want to dish out laws. You're talking about social media bill. Now you want to begin to censor uh, what people do. Who censors what they do? I mean, maybe it's, the point is to come to a place where you know, it's not abused. Because over time, you would agree also that we've seen a lot of quite insensitive uh, or sensitive matters also go up on social media without any kind of, um, what do you say? No, no, there's nobody who's giving a gauge we, sorry. what can go on. Okay. But so we if have, we come to a place where we can regulate. No, we already have some regulations and mm -hmm. laws in place but, uh, that are not okay. being affected. Mm -hmm. if, if you infringe on my rights, in, in, in on the social media, and I have your details. I can take you to court. I can go to the police. Mm. I can. That, those laws are already there. Speaking of policing, mm -hmm. right, I feel like policing should not be in the realms, right, 
of our um, lawmakers. Policing should be in the realms of everybody that owns a device, who buys a device for their children, and be responsible, buy, and be responsible in terms of mm -hmm. how you uh, utilize those uh, uh, handheld devices. Whatever it is you're going to use to view these things and uh, what should be said, so not the actual information. Information should be available to all, mm, I agree. no matter whether you believe in that information. People have been, so, so long as it's not, so long as it's not abused. false and abused and or it's fake. not upset. Yeah, exactly. Fake mm -hmm. news, as they call it. Okay, so we'll move on to the next paper, which is the Vanguard. And uh, the big story is uh, insecurity. We must go outside budgets for funds, mm. uh, says Senate President as Reps Task Force task police, others to rescue, kidnap judge, and Navy urged to set up base in Ogun community to check kidnappings. That's on page five, as already displayed there. Now, Trade Minister raises fresh fears over after. That's on page 19. Mm -hmm. And if we go to the top of it, DSS defers uh, Shawore Bakaris uh, release till today. That's on page nine, so we'll see how the day unfold with that. Signing of uh, Police Service Commission Act, Oshiba just office not relegated according to presidency, and that's on page nine. No more excellency. Call me Mr. Governor, <laughs> says uh, Sanwalu. How does that sound? You have to love, you have to love uh, current, uh, well, he says no, call him excellency. Yeah, again. well, well uh, Mr. Mr. Governor. Governor. <laughs> <laughs> you have to love Mr. Governor. For, that's so uh, it's, it's very endearing. It's very, very endearing. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I've noticed his style and how he has approached things. He gave us a little uh, insight into his biography uh -huh. and how he started his uh, journey in entrepreneurship and public service. And now he started from a small company that was meant to service uh, uh, the average citizen uh, in Lagos State mm. with plumbing and other kinds of services. So he obviously had, in, at his core, is a man that is, wants to serve. He's mm. just been begging for a platform to serve, and he's found the ultimate platform on the state perspective, oh. a state level, okay. as governor. So we just hope he, he can uh, he can he can sustain translate that. this and just sustain it over the mm. course of his uh, tenure. Mm -hmm. So we we'll continue from the Balogun Market Fire Police Man and one other died during rescue operation, unfortunately, and that's on page six of the newspaper and the. Glow spreads to joy. Okay, something there for you. Find out what it is. And especially interview on page 23. Banks can lend more without accumulating bad loans. Uh, Global uh, Bank CEO says, now how illicit financial flows drain cash from maternal care budget on page 24. So we're just going to take very quickly uh, one story here. So, Well, I just want to say one or two things on the DSS. Okay. The first story back in mm -hmm. the today. Mm -hmm. Ideally, they should have been released yesterday because the court granted them the bail and they met all conditions. the conditions. Mm. But I guess there maybe because of administrative released. work. Mm -hmm. So we're waiting to see whether this time around we will have the executive or DSS obey the court order. Mm, we, we, let's look and see how the day unfolds. We know, yeah. we believe, we, we yeah. hope, let's hope that uh, something will move forward from where they are. So we go very quickly to Dix, uh, this day newspaper. Federal government extends deadline for no pay order on IPPIS. <laughs> uh, NUC concludes negotiations with ASO today. That's on the front page of this day newspaper, but it's continued on page eight. And Buhari weighs options on Magu and Fowler Saitania, president, to decide whether to extend their tenures has done for military chiefs or give them second term. Uh, that's on the front page there, as you can see displayed, but this continued also on page eight. Now, new regulations confers on AGF power to manage recovered assets, states to pay 30% to federal government on reclaimed uh, properties. And that's on the front page also, where a continuation on page eight. And Royal Visit, Bini, Oba Benin and uh, the CEO of Access Bank there. Uh, that's from yesterday. Now, a people called Sack Senate spokesman at a, and that's on page six. So, I know that we're having a conversation almost around this. So, do we start with? <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So, if right, he, sure. Buhari and the, uh, the <laughs> options, weighing the options on uh, Magu. Yes, I mean, it's, it's only, I mean, it's clear, clearly, I mean, two of, two of those headlines are actually kind of linked in terms of mm -hmm. him and um, Buhari. Uh, the, the, yeah, so the, the, we, the government is taking away some of the powers that would typically fall within the purview of uh, the EFCC uh, head, and they've put it on the Attorney General, General of the Federation. Federation. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it make, makes you realize that he's actually weighing his options in terms of trying to sort of find out what the powers are uh -huh. for EFCC in terms of how they're able to enforce this um, crime, um, economic and, I guess, financial crimes in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. It's actually one of our only success stories. So us actually trying to curtail the powers 
I think we, we not necessarily work in our favor. So okay. long as whoever is in power uh -huh. is doing what they're ex exactly what they're supposed to do. Uh -huh. So um, looking at, uh, I mean, I looked at their scorecard in terms of what EFC has achieved over the course of uh, uh, Magu's tenure. Yeah. I think he's always done almost three uh, three billion dollars in terms of recovered assets. Uh -huh. He's looked at, I mean, they've done they've done prosecuted at least one thousand. So almost 2,000 uh, yeah, um, successful cases. Yeah, cases have been prosecuted. But he also, also uh, but in terms of trying to even break that down further, you always wonder, were these really enforced? So when, once mm -hmm. they were, the convictions were, um, were, 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 ga were gained, right, were, 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 they, were, were these uh, convictions seen to their full ten, um, term? Oh. That's another question that also needs to be asked. But I mean, moving forward, I, I, don't, I think that looking at both of those particular crucial um, NDAs, it's very, very, very crucial in terms of uh, how we are perceived uh, internationally. Mm -hmm. And I feel like for continuity's sake, especially if it is seen at large that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, these, uh, these offices should continue to run as they are. Mm -hmm. Okay, so any thoughts on that? Or we want, I, I want to move on in, yes, the, no interest, in the interest of time. Uh, and then we'll just take finally the Punch newspaper. I would encourage you actually to grab a okay. complete sports. The Punch newspaper now, oil worth of $42 billion stolen in 10 years, according to NEITI on page 34. Capital projects suffers 2.1 trillion naira underfunding in four years. That's according to the Minister of Finance there, Ahmed, uh, on page 31. Malami reduces EFCC powers, scraps uh, asset recovery panels. That's just what if he was talking about uh, now. On page 16, uh, reps laments judges kidnapping, and Senate seeks permanent solution. As you know, yet another case of insecurity right in front of us. On page two, you find that story. UK trip, Buhari didn't undermine Oshiba, just says presidency. So all of these um, Chinese whispers we're hearing. So that's on page 13. Bill to hike VAT uh, passes second reading in Senate on page 34. Now, Fashola says Nigerian roads not that bad. Really? MEN and NECA disagree. That's on page two. The roads are not as bad as they are often portrayed. I know that this is going to be your headline, but the roads are not that bad. <laughs> oh, he was begging us to have this as our headline. Let's yes, that's, that's just what he was. It was a soundbite that he had been probably they had been probably devising for a while. Now mm. I don't know who his consultants are, but this soundbite is going to stay for a long time and it resonates will. through yeah. um, at, at different uh, media houses. But at the end of the day, right? You, you, you have to actually admit that any kind of minister in Nigeria, especially with heavy industries, infrastructure works, it's almost a thankless job just because of the state of where we are right uh. now. And they have inherited years and years of not necessarily the best um, in judgment yeah, in, terms of, yeah, in terms of putting together uh, projects that will benefit us long term. Uh -huh. So he is basically sitting on a pile of bad reviews. <laughs> from the entire nation. Yeah, so I can understand why that pressure will hit him hard. But I don't think the best way, um, way to Please do it is, is to... So, I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know why he's gone this way to say they're not that bad. But the fact they is are, that they are bad. They are bad. They are bad. Mm. He's not saying they're not that bad. It's not as bad as portrayed. No, no, I mean, I, those yeah, are his words. Well, I'm going somewhere. Exactly. It just How seems, bad could it possibly be? Exactly. It just, it just shows that maybe or maybe not, the people around our so-called leaders, a minister, the people around him, his SAs, PAs, uh -huh. they're not giving them the right no, information. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I have to just disagree. I'm sorry. <laughs> I beg you you because Fashola is a very smart, astute person. Uh -huh. I agree. Nothing he, has, nothing he says with his mouth, right, is something that he's, you know, he, 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 he has all the information uh -huh. at his disposal. Yeah, so I'm just saying maybe they're giving him so I'm, so I'm just saying no, maybe there's no way that he's ill advised. Even if they're giving him wrong information, he lives in Lagos. I would believe that somehow. Yes, and he was And let's not forget he was the executive governor of Lagos. He knows. We it know knows. he knows. And he has spoken about, I'm, I'm not going to sort of expose mm. anybody, but I know he has spoken about this tremendously in other yeah. forums. Mm. So what, what, what all my, my, my own take on this is basically to... Maybe the pressure. There's a lot of pressure on him mm -hmm. externally and well, internally. True, externally, true. especially in terms yeah. of FDIs mm -hmm. yes. and trying to structure uh, diaspora funds and yeah. all of that because true. that's going to be within his purview. So he's, he's caught between a rock and a hard place of how to actually manage that situation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he says he knows so, that it will be the headline. Well, well there you that's go. My, he, he bought the space. <laughs> so, so it's on the front page anyway. Yeah. And that's it. Nigeria's shame. Governor Bello's burden. Nigeria
Ikeja State Technical College on page nine. I'm just going to read this out and then we'll wrap. And the Oshibado fails to delay 35 aids uh, sacking on page 11, and judge orders show arrest released from DSS custody on page eight. Lagos begins demolition of burnt uh, Balogun Market building on page four. An appeal called SAS Senate uh, spokesman. We already have this on page 24 of the nation newspaper. And pardoned Zampara convicts arrested for caste snatching and rape. So he's unrepentant, sadly. And that's on pages four and five. 11 months areas, Lautek as a self strike notice on page 25. In the interest of time, we uh, would have to. Uh, ask you to crave your indulgence to say please grab copies of these newspapers uh, that we've called out and we've tried to look at and then uh, get the details for yourself. I'd like to say thank you Dr. Femi You're for welcome. being here and thank you also Ifi for being here and I hope it does make sense of this. We will call it a wrap uh, for today's of the press. We'll do this again tomorrow same time 8.30 here on Plus TV Africa and the program is of the press. I am Amaka Okuyi. Have yourselves a good day. <laughs>